Hey Astroneers, Games for Life here. In today's video I'll be ranking all Astroneer planets. I'll do that by using 4 different metrics. Difficulty, resource importance, landscapes and flora. Each planet will get 4 scores, all ranging from 1 to 10. And then we'll crown the winners of each category. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Silva is Astroneer's starting planet, so let's start with it, shall we? In terms of difficulty, it's obviously the easiest planet to explore. However, it does still pose some threats, especially to beginner players, so it gets a 2 for difficulty. You will find all the basic starter needs on Silva. Silva, but for any kind of advanced resources, you've got to leave the planet. Needless to say, it doesn't do too well in this category, so I'll give it 4 out of 10 for resource importance. Silva is a huge planet, at least compared to its nearest neighbors, and with its size comes biome variety. There is no shortage of cool things to see on Silva. For example, the Mushroom Caves is one of the most interesting biomes in the whole game. So let's give Silva a 9 for its landscapes. There are a lot of plants on Silva. It's a planet covered in forests after all, but there aren't a lot of actual plantable species on here, and the ones you can find aren't unique to Silva. So I'm sorry, but I'll have to give it a 5 for Flora. Now let's move on to the Solo. If Silva is the Earth, then the Solo is the Moon. This is the very first destination for most Astroneers, so it's a pretty low difficulty planet as well. For that, I think a 3 is appropriate. Apart from Zinc and Tungsten, you won't find anything special on the Solo. You can basically find everything from Silva here, so the Solo is a small step above. For that, I believe it deserves a 5 for resource importance. In terms of biomes, the Solo is honestly unimpressive. I mentioned earlier that it is basically the Moon, and it looks like it, empty and desolate. I'm be harsh on it, but the solo gets a 3 in the landscape category. Since the whole planet is full of nothing, you can imagine there isn't really a lot of flora to talk about. These spiky things are everywhere, but that's pretty much it. So the solo only scores 3 points for flora. Kelidor is, to be honest, one of the planets I have spent the most time on. It's not a horribly difficult planet, but it is a small step up from the first ones. The spiky stuff might take you by surprise at first, but after a while you get used to them being everywhere. So for difficulty, I'd give Kelidor a 5. That seems about right. Here's the main reason people come to Kelidor. Dynamite. We all love blowing stuff up in Astroneer, but in order to craft dynamite you need sulfur, and you can only find that on Kalidor or Aatrox, and it goes without saying that people who are just starting to explore the solar system don't want anything to do with Aatrox. Considering the importance and scarcity of sulfur, I think Kalidor deserves an 8 in this category. Being mostly made up of deserts, Kalidor doesn't get a chance to showcase a lot of biome diversity. There are multiple biomes, obviously, but they tend to blend in. Taking all of that into consideration, I feel like a 5 suits it best. Kalidor has some pretty cool plants, some of which can only only be found here. The cave systems are full of life on Kalidor and the deserts on the surface are home to some nasty killer plants as well. I would honestly give Kalidor a higher score because I really like it, but trying to remain objective here, I'll give it a 6 for flora. Before we move on to the next planet, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. As a small channel trying to grow, doing that really helps me out a lot. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Alright, so Glacio is where I've built my main base, so of course I like this planet a lot. So let's take a look at how difficult it is to navigate. Traversal is harder than on other planets, there are plants trying to blow you up around every corner, and I think our Astroneer is freezing out here. So that sounds like an 8 to me. Glacio has a lot of resources in its cave systems, such as titanium, but the most important resource is on its surface. I am of course talking about iron. A lot of people first come to Glacio in search of iron, just like I did a while back. And because it also has an atmosphere rich in argon, this makes it the perfect candidate for steel production. For these reasons, I'll give it an 8 for resources. Glacio is a frozen planet covered in ice and snow. That makes it harder to explore, but also more beautiful. Some of the scenery is just amazing, especially around Christmas. I always visit Glacio close to the holidays, so I can get into the vibe. For the Christmas vibes alone, I think it deserves an 8 in this category. With only boom balloons and cataplans everywhere, Glacio's surface feels cold, empty and dangerous. The caves, however, are full of life. Lots of plants live here and they aren't the friendly kind. Overall, I think Glacio's flora deserves a 6 out of 10. Vesania is an exotic planet filled with interesting biomes, lifeforms and hazards. On a difficulty scale, it's not quite as dangerous as Glacio, but you still shouldn't underestimate it. I think a 7 out of 10 fits it best for difficulty. Vesania is home to an extremely important resource, lithium. You'll need lithium on your journey through space, so you'll have to eventually come to Vesania. Apart from that, you can also find all the ingredients for titanium alloy here. With all that in mind, Vesania's resource importance is somewhere at around a 7 out of 10. This planet has extremely unusual terrain features that make it both stunning to look at and difficult to traverse. The most beautiful places on Vesania have to be its dense forests that look oddly alien when compared to Silva's forests. Overall, Vesania is an exotic looking planet which makes it stand out with a score of 9. A lot of things will try to kill you on Vesania and the worst thing is you'll probably never see them coming. From twistal whips to cataplants and lash leaves, there is no shortage when it comes to the variety of ways you can die here. For that, I'll give it a 9 in the flora department. 
Novus has a bunch of ways to kill you while also boasting a creepy atmosphere. You'll basically find almost everything from Vesania here, so this means Novus gets a 7 for difficulty as well. Iron, Lithium and Methane are the main resources you can find on Novus. This isn't to say it doesn't also have other resources. It does, but not in such abundance. Iron is hidden in caves, so you're better off getting them from Glacial's surface, but you can get a ton of Lithium and Methane here on Novus, so let's give it a 7 for that. As I've mentioned earlier, Novus has a creepy atmosphere with weird forests and mist covering its surface. Normally, this would give it a pretty big score in this category, but because of the lack of biome diversity, I'll have to give it a 7. You can essentially find all the plants from Vesania here, but in smaller quantities. Novus isn't completely covered in forests and plants like Vesania. Instead, it has lots of craters and empty space. One thing that makes it stand out though is the presence of fractal roses, which can only be found here and nowhere else. Considering that, I think Novus deserves a 7 in the flora category. And we finally get to talk about Aatrox, my favorite Estronier planet. No, I'm just kidding, I completely hate it here. Mostly because I somehow managed to die quite often. Aatrox is not for beginners, this is a dangerous planet with hazards lurking around every corner. On top of that, you'll have trouble maintaining power due to low wind and high cloud density. Needless to say, Aatrox gets a big 10 out of 10 for difficulty. High risks get you high rewards, so of course Aatrox is hiding some of the most important resources in Astroneer. Take Helium for example, you won't be able to craft any nanocarbon alloy without Helium. And do you know what's the only place where you can harvest Helium? That's right, on Aatrox. Apart from that, there's also Sulfur, Methane and Nitrogen. Oh, and if you need Bites, Aatrox has the most valuable research items and samples. Overall, I think Aatrox deserves a 9 in terms of resource importance. During the day, Aatrox looks bleak and irradiated, but in no way special. At night, however, green glow slowly starts to appear, noxious plants hide behind rocks waiting for you to come by, and the whole atmosphere feels like you're in a horror movie. If the entire planet didn't look the exact same, I would have given it a better score here, but as things are right now, I think a 5 out of 10 is all it's gonna get for landscapes. I've already mentioned that there are tons of noxious plants on Aatrox. You've got the Wizwits, the Atectus, but by far the most majestic plants in all of Estronir are the spew flowers. Both types of spew flower only grow on Aatrox. The elegant spew flower grows on the surface, while the noxious one grows underground. Judging by the uniqueness and beauty of these plants, Aatrox deserves an 8 out of 10 for its flora. Now it's time to announce the winners, so let's start with difficulty, where the only obvious choice is Aatrox. With a difficulty score of 10, everything will try to kill you here, so be careful. For the next category, resource importance, our winner is... Aatrox again. I scored it a 9 because this is a high risk, high reward type of deal. It makes sense that the most dangerous planet also holds the most valuable resources like sulfur or helium. So which Estronier planet is the most beautiful? For me, this one's a tie between Silva and Vesania, both scoring a 9. So I let you decide in the comment section below which one is the actual winner. For the last category, we've got to take a look at flora. Based on how unique and diverse its flora is, Vesania takes the trophy of the flora category with a score of 9. There's simply no other planet with such diversity in species of plants. Alright, so those were the Astronier Planet Awards, let me know what you think of my scores, are they on point or will I get yelled at in the comments, who knows. I'd love to talk to you more about the scores for each category, so don't be afraid to use that comment section. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. I've noticed the large majority of people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed, so if you're one of those and you enjoy the content I put out, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks for sticking around until the end, I've been Games for Life and I'll see you next time. Cheers Astroneers!